Imagine your brain as a high-tech control center. Sometimes everything runs in perfect harmony, while in other times it feels like it's running on a completely different operating system. Well, today we're going to explore the science behind ADHD, how the brain networks and neurotransmitter imbalances can cause your mind to wonder, and what practical strategies can you put in place to stay on track. Let's dive in. ADHD, or Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder, is a neurodevelopmental condition that impacts the brain structure and function. It's not a flaw, it's simply a different wiring of the brain that affects focus, memory, impulsive control, and emotional regulation. Think of it like trying to tune into your favorite radio station, but the dials keep sliding around. ADHD also has very strong genetic ties, meaning that if someone in your family has it, you're more likely to have it too. It manifests in distinct ways, generally falling to two primary types. Attentive type, characterized by difficulty sustaining attention, organizing tasks, and following through on instructions. People with this type often seem forgetful, easily distracted, and may even be seen daydreaming frequently. Hyperactive impulsive type, on the other hand, show excessive energy, impulsivity, and difficult staying still. They may interrupt conversations, act without thinking, and struggle to wait their turn. Many individuals actually show a combination of both of these, affecting about 1 in 20 people worldwide. Interestingly, ADHD is more frequently diagnosed in boys, possibly because girls tend to exhibit more the inattentive type rather than the overtly hyperactive type, usually seen in boys anyway. Now let's take a closer look at how ADHD affects your brain. The ADHD brain is unique in structure and function, with significant differences in several key areas. First, consider the prefrontal cortex. This region governs executive functions like planning, organizing, and inhibiting inappropriate behaviors. In ADHD, reduced activity and even a smaller size in the prefrontal cortex contributes to impulsivity and difficulty maintaining focus. Next is the basal ganglia, which acts like the project manager by helping initiate tasks. Reduced volume here is linked to difficulty in starting and persisting with tasks. When it's off, even the simplest task can feel like it's starting a complicated project. But it's not just about the individual regions. It's also about how different networks in your brain work together. Your brain is full of networks that sometimes collaborate and sometimes work in opposition to help your brain think plan and even daydream. Two of the most important networks for understanding attention and focus is the default mode network and the task positive network. Default mode network or the DMN is active when you're at rest or when your mind wanders. It's like the brain's idle mode and is involved in self-referential thought i.e. thinking about yourself or your memories and your future. For example if you're sitting quietly and daydreaming the default network is hard at work. Key regions in the default mode network include the medial prefrontal cortex, posterior cingulate cortex, and the angular gyrus. These areas help process emotions, recall past experiences, and imagine future scenarios. In people with ADHD, the default mode network often doesn't turn off as it should when you need to focus. When you're trying to concentrate on a task, the default mode network should deactivate. If it doesn't, it can lead to distractibility and mind wandering, which are common challenges in ADHD. In contrast, the task positive network or the TPN kicks into gear when you engage in a task that requires attention, like solving a problem or writing a report. Think of it as the on task network. It's responsible for goal directed behavior, helping you focus on external tasks and managing your cognitive resources. The task positive network involves regions such as the lateral prefrontal cortex and parts of the parietal cortex. When you need to concentrate, the task positive network should become active and ideally it should suppress the DMN to keep distractions at bay. In ADHD, however, this suppression isn't always effective, leading to a sort of tug of war between the daydreaming side and the focused attention side. These brain regions and networks don't work in isolation. They interact closely with chemical messengers, namely dopamine and norepinephrine, which are crucial for how your brain rewards you for tasks and helps you keep motivated. Dopamine, often called the brain's feel-good or reward chemical, is essential for motivation, reinforcement, and experiencing pleasure. In ADHD, there are fewer dopamine transport proteins, which means the flow of dopamine along the neural pathway isn't as efficient. Imagine ordering a pizza and only getting a side salad. The immediate satisfaction just isn't there. Studies have also shown that people with ADHD exhibit atypical activity in the brain's reward system, a network of structures that drive motivational behavior, anticipation, and learning through reinforcement. This can lead to the overemphasis of short-term rewards rather than long-term benefits, impacting planning and decision-making. It's no wonder that medication like amphetamine and methamphetamine 
which boosts dopamine and norepinephrine transmission also helps improve focus and ADHD. Norepinephrine plays a crucial role in boosting alertness and attention. When its levels are lower, as they are often seen in ADHD, it becomes tougher to sustain focus and respond effectively to environmental cues. This neurotransmitter imbalance affects two major reward pathways in your brain. The first is the mesolimbic pathway. Think of this pathway as the reward highway. It starts in the ventral tegmental area, VTA, and projects to the limbic regions like the nucleus accumbens, amygdala, and the hippocampus. This pathway is all about processing reward, motivation, and emotional responses. In ADHD, the mesolimbic pathway doesn't work as efficiently, making it harder for your brain to form strong reinforcement loops and encourage positive, productive behavior. The second pathway is the mesocortical pathway. This pathway also begins in the ventral tegmental area, but heads straight through the prefrontal cortex, the brain's command center for decision-making, working memory, and cognitive control. When this pathway is less efficient, dopamine signaling in the prefrontal cortex will weaken. This explains why tasks that require sustained effort or long-term planning often feels less rewarding and can feel like a real challenge. When these pathways don't function optimally, it's like having a massive supply shortage. The dopamine signals don't reach their intended destinations and your brain struggles to reinforce positive behaviors. For example, consider trying to finish a long work report. Ideally, your brain should keep you motivated until the task is done. However, in ADHD, you might find yourself repeatedly distracted by quick, easy, rewarding activities like checking your phone or scrolling through social media. The mesolimbic pathway might be giving you a dopamine boost for these instant gratification, while the mesocortical pathway, which should help you focus on long-term goals, isn't providing enough reinforcement. This imbalance makes it tough to stay on track. That's why in ADHD, motivation is often driven by factors such as interest, tasks that are naturally stimulating, urgency, a pressing deadline or time-sensitive challenge. They underestimate their task if there is no deadline. Degree of challenge, activities that are engaging without being overwhelming, and novelty new or unfamiliar experiences that capture attention. Stimulant medications like Ritalin and Adderall work by increasing dopamine availability along these pathways, helping to enhance focus and motivation. Without sufficient dopamine signaling, the reward system can't effectively reinforce positive behaviors, which is the key reasons why many individuals with ADHD find it challenging to stay motivated for long-term tasks. ADHD doesn't just influence attention, it also affects how we learn and store memories. Learning relies heavily on a process called long-term potentiation, or LTP, where repeated stimulation strengthens connections between neurons. LTP occurs most prominently in the hippocampus, the brain's memory hub. In ADHD, reduced dopamine activity weakens LTP, making it harder to consolidate and retrieve memories. Additionally, the slower development of neural pathways in ADHD brains disrupts efficient communication between brain regions impacting working memory, the ability to hold and manipulate information temporarily, which is essential for problem solving and decision making. By the way, we've done a full video on both long-term potentiation and the hippocampus, so be sure to check those out if you're interested in learning more. Before we wrap up, if you've enjoyed this video and want to help support our channel, please check out our BioBrain Buddies Etsy shop. We've got some awesome brain-inspired goodies that not only celebrates the wonders of neuroscience and also helps us keep creating more engaging science content. ADHD isn't a flaw or a failure. It's a unique neurodevelopmental profile that shapes how individuals experience the world. By understanding the underlying neuroscience, we can develop strategies that work with the ADHD brain rather than against it. If these insights helped you better understand ADHD or offered a new perspective, drop a comment below with your thoughts and experiences. And if you're ready to harness the power of your brain, hit that like button and subscribe for more science-based tips.